Yo, what's up my friends? It's Steve from Straight Fire Picks. We got best bets for NBA here for you today on Tuesday, February 27th, 2024. We got NBA player prop spreads predictions here for you today. We're going to have five picks that make a great value bets for this Tuesday NBA slate. As always, we'd just like to thank you all for your continued support here on the channel. If you're new to the channel here today, please be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Always appreciate that. We are on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Appreciate all of you guys' support as always. You guys absolutely rock. Uh, once we get to 10,000, it's going to be exciting, guys. We're going to be doing some giveaways and um, and stuff like that. So it'll be definitely fun when we get to that point. Make sure you guys check us out on social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at Straight Fire Picks for more picks, content, re uh, recaps, ladder challenges, stuff like that. Great way to keep up with us there. Also, be sure to check out our community Discord page as well. I'll have a link down below in the comment section and the description for that. Uh, where you can check that out. And also drop your favorite pick for today's action down below in the comment section. If you like your pick included in our comment capper section, just be sure to put a star or an asterisk next to your pick. And we'll include your pick in the video if it hits. Okay, guys, now it's time for a shout out to our Straight Fire MVPs. So as always, you see this beautiful list here running beside me of all of our Straight Fire MVPs. If you guys are interested in becoming a Straight Fire MVP today, there is a join button down below. I'll also have a link in the comment section and the description for that. Great way to support the channel and what we do here at the channel. The cost is just $3.99 per month. You get access to our picks and plays early and our notes. You also get um, a badge next to your name, some custom emojis, roll call in the Discord, and shoutouts on our video. Like I said, a great way to support the channel and what we do here at the channel. All right, guys, without further ado, enough on that. Let's do a recap from yesterday. So we ended up having five picks. We added a pick, which missed. Uh, we ended up going two and three. <coughs> um... Obviously not a great day, not not as bad as it could be, but uh, obviously we want to do much better than that. We cashed the Miami Heat, though, plus 6.5 spread. I love that one. Uh, they ended up winning that game outright. And then we cashed our under of the day as well, Tyrese Halliburton, under 22.5 points. He got there easily. I believe he finished with 9 points. Oh, that was an absolutely easy cash. And then, of course, all of our overs missed. Uh, it's kind of reinforcing the idea of playing unders. Uh, we had Jaden Ivey over one and a half threes. He hits one in the first quarter. I honestly thought we were going to catch that pretty easily. Um, and then he doesn't end up playing the fourth, so that definitely hurt us there as far as that goes as well. Uh, even outside of that, though, I really thought he was going to get there. And unfortunately, it just did not happen. Um, so obviously that one hurt. And then uh, we had Vince Williams Jr. over 18 and a half points and assists. Um, Grizzlies got completely murked last night by the Nazi finishes with 11. I uh, really didn't get all that close, uh, so I was obviously sad. And, um, and then finally, we had Bam Adebayo over 10.5 rebounds. I actually like this play. He had nine rebounds in the third quarter, guys, and somehow didn't get two, didn't get two to finish out the game. So that one definitely hurt. I thought like that one was still there in the pocket, it just didn't hit. Um, even the IB one, I felt like was in the pocket. I mean. It's it's just it's hard to say, guys. I didn't have the Grizzlies losing that game by almost 30 points. I thought the the Grizzlies would be able to score better than they do. This is the last time we trust Vince Williams. So I've kind of kind of started to get off that train. Um, he's just not producing consistent results for us. So we're looking at some more unders today, some more spreads today. A couple quick notes. I'm also going to have a couple added plays likely later. So I want to have seven total plays today. It's a pretty big slate today. Um, I like to take advantage of that. And um, looking to have seven plays total, so two added plays later. Uh, so be sure to check back later um, for that. I'll put those out in the community tab and um, on our Twitter, Discord, stuff like that, where you guys can see that. And uh, likely in the pinned comment down below as well, I have the added plays. So be sure to check back later for that. Um, we'll also have a parlay later as well. Um, I'm, I'm not doing our For the Sweet parlay yet. Um, I'm going to look at some more stuff, like I said, um, and then we'll um, we'll determine. I might put all seven picks in the parlay. We'll see, or dumb some stuff down. We'll see. Kind of, I want to kind of have some adjusted lines as well, so we can get a, a better look there as well. All right, guys, let's get after it, though. Let's get this 5 no sweep. Let's get right into our picks here. At number one, we got Alperin Singoon, under 14.5 rebounds and assist, minus 113 odds on Fandle. Love this play, guys. Got Singoon under in six of his last ten games. Seven of his last ten here on the road. He's under in six of seven this season when the Rockets lose by 15-plus points. Five of those being on the road. So we know the Rockets are not a good road team at all, right? They don't compete very well on the road. They're an NBA worst 9-17-1 against the spread on the road. 
with a straight up record of five and twenty two. So they've been absolutely horrible on the road. You got the Thunder here listed as ten and a half point favorites. So that's why I say the Thunder could easily win this game by fifteen plus points. You definitely see that happening, uh, particularly being at home. I don't think Houston's got enough to keep up with them. And um, honestly, I'm expecting the Thunder a to shoot well at home, right? And also to play more energized defense at home, so leading to less rebound and assist opportunities for Singoon. We saw these two teams meet in Houston the other day, and Singoon still went under. He finished with 14, uh, but you consider the fact that they're playing at home. Singoon is much, much better at home, and he still ended up going under this line. The fact that he's on the road now, I got him getting you know between 10 and 11 rebounds and assists in this game. Because um, it does make a huge difference going from home to road, especially for the Rockets, and they've proven that throughout the season. Like I said, a record of 5-22 and 22 speaks for itself. So he is under in four of his last four games versus the Thunder, so he has not been cashing this line versus OKC. Now, we know it's a great matchup for centers. Typically, this is um, you like to tackle overs versus the Thunder um, in this matchup, but the line is, is just set too high. Um, like I said, it's typically a great center matchup, but the line, like I said, is too high. Uh, for his history that he's had versus the Thunder, his recent history on the road, the fact that the Rockets as a team are on the road, and the Thunder here are a big, heavy home favorite. So I think here, guys, I think the Thunder could blow the Rockets out, and if that happens, I don't see Singoon sniffing this line. I really don't. So love it there, guys, for number one pick. We got El Perrin, Singoon, under 14.5 rebounds and assists, minus 113 ounce on Vandal. Can at number two, we got Tobias Harris under 16 and a half points here for the Philadelphia 76ers, minus 115 odds on FanDuel. Love this one, guys. He's under in four of his, or rather, six of his last 10 games, four of his last 10 here on the road. He's under, though, in nine of his last, in nine of 11 games this season when the 76ers lose by 10 plus points. Well, the spread is set to 12 and a half, so this is definitely has a high likelihood of the 76ers losing by 10 plus, and we've really seen. The 76ers haven't played great, uh, especially lately. You know, we just saw the Bucks beat them the other day, going away. Um, they have not really been playing that great. And I know this is a divisional opponent, and you can make the argument that the game will be close because of that. And it very well might. Regardless, though, I still think Harris would go under. Um, you know, Celtics pretty good versus the small forward and the power forward position. Celtics allowing the fewest points to power forwards, the 11th fewest to small forwards. We know that the Celtics overall are a pretty good defensive team. Um, so Harris, you know, has not had a lot of consistency, especially of late. Um, you know, his, his most recent games, he has not been hitting this line, uh, which we like to see that. He's under in 10 out of 18 games this season without Joel Embiid. So, you know, this line honestly has come back quite a bit. Um, they keep lowering his line because he's not hitting the overs right now. I think here in a tough matchup with the Celtics, it's hard to imagine that he all of a sudden catches fire and uh, starts going off. It's kind of crazy. Um, Paul Reed has actually been getting more volume lately. Um, so Harris hasn't been getting quite as much volume. Um, so honestly, I, I love the fact that Harris going under today, especially if this, this game turns into a blowout. Obviously, it helps us out a lot. So love it there, guys. For number two pick, we got Tobias Harris under 16.5 points here for the Philadelphia 76ers. Minus 115 odds on FanDuel. Okay, at number three, now I'm going to say this. This is my favorite play of the day. I'm not putting any additional unit on it because we don't have to because you're going to make 1.5 units on this play if it hits. We got Evan Mobley over 2.5 assists here for the Cleveland Cavaliers, plus 150 odds on DraftKings. I absolutely love the value on this. Obviously, plus 150 speaks for itself. Uh, this is such a reasonable assist line. We've seen him hit this line in 11 out of 18 home games this season, including four of the last five. So I love seeing that, particularly betting on him at home here for his assist. It's a great matchup for the power forward position as far as assists, as the Mavs allow the fifth most assists to power forwards, the ninth most assists overall. So the Mavs overall allow assists, guys, and Mobley should be able to get three. Um, I know it's definitely one of those, those kind of weird plays where um you know obviously he's not the primary passer so you know it's kind of the scary thing with it but i think for the value and the spot here versus dallas at home i i don't think you could beat the value and um i love seeing value like this i really do my eyes light up when i see value like this so i think it's a great look here chance for us to make 1.5 units just putting a unit on it um so that's why i'm not doing a unit and a half on it it is my favorite play of the day though just in terms of value 
and the matchup and um, his recent trends at home. I also love anything, you know, for rebounds and assists for Mobley. Either you can just take his rebounds, you can take his rebounds assist, or you can take his assist. I think those are all playable. His rebounds are at 8.5, rebounds assist at 10.5, and, and his assist are at 2.5. Um, all of these are great positional matchups for Mobley. Mobley has been getting a lot of rebounds lately. Now, the only thing that scared me off of Mobley a little bit was the fact that his recent logs versus Dallas, I believe, were 7 and 8. Um, so he did not hit the over versus Dallas his last couple of games. But um, despite that, him being at home, I think he's got a great chance still to hit that over. And the, particularly the rebounds and assists, I think, uh, would be probably your best. How do I put this? He's 14 out of 18 at home, hitting that rebound and assist line at 10 and a half. Um, so that is definitely percentage wise probably your best hit rate. I think the value is the best on the two and a half assist. Looking at plus one fifty, um, you really can't beat that. And I think he's going to get those three assists for us. So um, he is two for two. His last two logs versus the Mavericks with logs is six and four. So that's the other thing I liked um, in the difference between uh, the rebounds and assists. Um, he's cashed this easily versus the Mavericks his last two. And um, I think he'll do it again here for today for us. So, love it there for our number three pick. We got Evan Mobley, over two and a half assists here for the Cleveland Cavaliers, plus 150 odds on DraftKings. Okay, and at number four, we got the Charlotte Hornets, plus 14 and a half spread here versus the Milwaukee Bucks, minus 110 odds on FanDuel. So, we are officially 2 0 and 1 betting on Hornets spreads, guys. I love the way that this team has been playing, uh, particularly on the defensive side. They are first. First, number one, in defensive rating over the last six games since the trade. So since you've seen Trey Mann enter the fold, Grant Williams and all those guys, Seth Curry, they are first in defensive rating. And they also have a 5-1 and one record. So they've also they've been playing great defense, and they've been winning. What's that, what's that thing? Defense wins championships? Well, not for the Hornets this year, but they can win them some games. Uh, they've been absolutely fantastic on the defensive side of the ball. It's been kind of crazy looking at it. Because they've played some really good offenses. Uh, they've played Golden State. They've played Utah at Utah, uh, which is really tough. They played Indiana at home. They played Atlanta. Those four offenses are very, very good. Um, and very tough to hold those offenses down. They did a very good job in all four of those games. Um, and I believe they covered, let's see, they covered in all those games as well. So they've been they've been an absolute wagon here lately. This spread is crazy. 14 and a half points? I, like, that's just too high for me. I think if the spread were like eight and a half, seven and a half, I'd probably stay away from it. But 14 and a half, that's crazy to me. Uh, for a team that's playing defense the way they are, are they going to be able to stop Giannis? Probably not. Uh, but overall, I think the effort will be there defensively. They'll be able to keep this game relatively close. Um, I like the way that these role players are playing here for the Hornets. Now the Bucks have dominated both matchups with the Hornets this season, winning by 31 and 36 respectively, so it's obviously not good at all. But like I said, completely different team in Charlotte right now, completely different energy, right? Um, like I said, the spread is just simply too high. You know what's interesting about the Hornets is they haven't actually shot the ball great over the last few games, and they've still been covering spreads and winning games. If this team gets hot offensively, look out. Um, they can end up... I might sprinkle their money line just 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 for the sake of doing it. Uh, they were playing good enough for me to, to warrant that uh, that sprinkle. I believe it's like plus six or seven hundred. So, like I said, spread's too high. Love it, guys. Four out of four pick. We got the Charlotte Hornets plus fourteen and a half spread here versus the Milwaukee Bucks minus one ten odds on Fanduel. Okay, and finally at number five, we got the New Orleans Pelicans minus two and a half spread here versus the New York Knicks minus one ten odds on Fanduel. Guys, I love fading the uh, I love fading the Knicks in this spot. They are on a back to back. They're coming off a two point win over the lowly Pistons uh, in a game where they easily could have lost that game. If you guys watched the end of that game, they very easily could have lost that game. Pelicans are 15, 12, and one on the road against the spread, pretty solid. Knicks 15, 13, and one at home against the spread, but just four and six against the spread on no rest. So not a great team covering spreads uh, when they don't when they're not rested. And we saw. Brunson played 40 plus minutes last night. We saw Josh Hart play 40 plus minutes last night. So uh, those legs are going to be a little tired, right? And um, obviously, that doesn't help their cause in a team that's already struggling defensively. They are uh, second worst in defensive rating over the last 10 games. So what's the what's the denominator there? No OG and an OB, right? 
That's been the biggest loss for the Knicks, especially defensively. Uh, we've seen that really show up. Obviously, we know, you know, Randall's been out for a while, but Ananobi is really, was really a difference maker when he first got traded over. Next, we're on a nine-game winning streak, and then he went down. And um, since that point, they have not been the same team, uh, particularly on the defensive side. It's been such a huge loss for them. And uh, meanwhile, on the other side for the Pelicans, they are sixth best in defensive rating over the last 10 games. So they've been playing good defense. Pelicans have won three of the last four meetings with the Knicks. Um, now, the one loss that they had to the Knicks was at Madison Square Garden last year by 22. So I didn't love seeing that. But I just think in this spot, I think this is a spot here to back the Pelicans. I think they have you know a strong advantage health-wise and also a rest advantage. Um, and Pelicans are obviously a pretty good team too. Uh, if they put it together with Zion, Ingram, McCollum, you know, they're obviously a pretty good team too. Now, another concern that I did have, McCollum and, Ing and uh, Zion are listed in the injury report as questionable. Um, I'm expecting at least one of them to play, though. I would, I'd be willing to put money down that one of them will at least play, and if that happens, I'm still feeling pretty good about this. Um, honestly, I think... Like I said, just in this spot, I really like taking the Pelicans. Now, Pelicans 5-1 and one straight up over the last six row games. They've won. And this is pretty much what you're taking. This is almost a pick em, So, um, I like the Pelicans at this spot, guys. Love it there for number five pick. we got the New Orleans Pelicans minus 2.5 spread there versus the New York Knicks. Minus 110 odds on FanDuel. All right, guys. going to do it for our picks. Our For the Sweet Parlay will be posted later in the community tab. So, look for that. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to work it yet, because I'm going to be adding some plays. That's why I didn't post it. Um, and I kind of want to go for the seven-pick parlay cash, because I'm just feeling something today. Um, so it'll end up being seven picks, probably. Uh, it depends on how the lines move. I may adjust some lines. We'll see what happens um, as far as that goes. But, um, yeah, we're going to have probably a seven-pick parlay, honestly, for the sweep. Then we're going to put a tenth of a unit on and, you know, if it hits, it hits as it does. It doesn't, it does. But obviously, it'd be nice if it hit. Um, but that's what we're going to do for that. Might have a ladder challenge out later as well. We'll see what we do for that. And, um, yeah, I might work on that. I'm going to work on some added plays, though, uh, this morning, too. Kind of look at what else we got here in the NBA today. I was looking at the Spurs, actually, plus 13 spread, too. They got great history versus Minnesota as far as covering that spread. But, Oh, I just can't trust the Spurs on the road, I don't think. I mean, I know it's a big spread, but, man, I just don't know. Um, but, yeah, outside of that, guys, a couple quick things. You know, I uh, I kind of let the negativity get to me uh, the other day on Saturday. And um, this is the reason why I ended up taking a day off. Um, we ended up coming back last night. Uh, but, you know, the mental drain of some of that stuff kind of did affect me, and I let it affect me, unfortunately. Um, you won't see that going forward, though. I mean... Any type of those. You know what bothers me the most? is isn't even negative comments. It's the ignorant comments that just are that are negative and dumb. I, I hate those. Those are the ones that really just tick me off. Um, you know, where they, they say something that's not even true in the video. They're like, bro, you give out VIP picks. You should give... I don't give out VIP picks. Stop. Stop. Watch my video. You guys know I don't give out VIP picks. I give out picks early. That's not VIP picks. <laughs> That's early. Early access to the picks that I give out in the videos. That's all it is. Um, and I don't charge you thirty nine ninety nine a month for it, do I? I mean, the the, the, th the, the thing is, it's like, it's it's $4. It's the cost of a coffee. You don't even have to do it. It's completely up to you. I, I appreciate the people that do it, but you don't have to. Um, it's meant to be kind of a support thing. It's not meant to be a, a VIP type of thing. Like what I mean by that is like they're not special picks that I give out better than others. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I'd say about that. It's just I'm gonna be better about that. I'm not gonna let the negative stuff affect me. Like I said, it's the ignorant stuff that really affects me probably the most. The negative stuff is what it is. I understand the frustration from time to time. We have not been hot. We've been on a bit of a cold stretch, and I know I understand the frustration. Uh, but we will bounce back. I'm confident we will. We always do. Um, it's just a matter of just staying in the game and staying at it. So I appreciate all of you guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Watch for our added content later. Like I said, we might have a ladder challenge if you're interested in that. And we're going to have a couple added plays for sure uh, later. And uh, we'll have our For the Sweet Parlay, a tenth of a unit, later posted in the community tab. And I'll post it up on Twitter too and in our Discord so you guys can see that. Outside of that, that's going to do it for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. We will catch you next time. Peace out.